Hi there, this is Russ Moyer, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic Edge. Living on the edge, leading on the edge, I'm so glad that you tuned in to us today. And I have with me today a wonderful guest and a good friend, Jim Bowen. Jim, thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here, brother. It's just uh, it's a real honor and to, uh, to be here and just see what God's doing. It's just incredible. You know, to see what God's doing this day and this hour prophetically is a, a wonderful thing. But you're a great inspiration to me. I spent many years in marketplace ministry, and part of the restoration of the church today, a big part of it, I think, hinges on God developing marketplace ministry and uh, letting people know that they're uh, a part of the church, whether they're in the nuclear church, whether they're in the extended church in the marketplace, or whether they're in a parachurch organization or group, the church is not a building or a denomination, but the church is you and I. That's right. The that's body of believers. That's correct. And, you know, I hear a lot of people that talk about marketplace ministry as part of this restoration of the new wineskin, but you don't see a whole lot of people that are legitimately walking in it, and you are, Jim. When I see you out there and I see what you're doing, I believe that you're one of the models that the Lord is raising up in this end-time army. Uh, to show other people what can happen in the marketplace. You know, because every Christian that goes to work is not a marketplace minister. Mm. You know, you have to, in order for you to be a really a marketplace minister, continue to uh, move in that, you have to be extending and advancing the kingdom and establishing spiritual and natural goals. And mm. you do such a great job of it. Oh, praise God. I've been really, uh, I've been really fortunate to, uh, you know, just to be in the marketplace, and what I sense, brother, is there's such a uh, there's such an openness in the marketplace, um, and, and I find a lot of the people now um, they 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 don't want to walk into a church, but uh, yet they're hungry for something, and they're they're seeking for it in the world. They don't know where that what it is, and they're using all the wrong things, whether it's um, you know alcohol or even uh, success in their business. They're looking for something to fill that vacuum, that hole, that void that I had at one time mm -hmm. that these people are seeking, and uh, we're bringing God right to them, right where they're at, right in the marketplace. And, and, and I find most people are open, and they have a bit of reservation of walking into a church, mm -hmm. but yet the marketplace, they're open, and God seems to be really uh, uh, just opening doors left, right, and center. And, and I just think... You know, a lot of the believers out there, if you, could, if, if you can know that right where you're at, right where they're positioned, God has a call in their life. They don't need, like I used to think, Russ, I needed a, a Bible uh, certificate or college or education. But what people don't know is God's called them right where they're at, right there. And they can, they can step out in faith and uh, be a marketplace, uh, make an impact where they're at. And... You've been in marketplace ministry for quite a while now. Why don't you share with the folks what you do and the role and position that you play in the natural? Because a lot of what happens there in that natural realm is what opens up the door and gives you a platform to minister from. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been in the financial industry now for 20 years, and uh, I got started. You know, uh, I wasn't a believer when I got started 20 years ago, and uh, um, when I became a Christian about 10 years ago. Uh, I was hungry. You know, I played the little game called church for a while, and uh, I went to church and, and um, you know, sat in the church, but kind of somewhat intimidated, never knew really how to express my faith. But once I got that, that you know, when, when God got a hold of my life and I knew that this was the true sense of fulfillment and peace, uh, then I wanted other people to know that, you know, this is really what they're searching for. This is the ultimate thirst quencher. They're looking for everything else. Mm -hmm. And so um, I've been in the financial industry now, like as I mentioned, 20 years. And about 10 years ago, after getting saved and and uh, God working through, you know, in my life and through me, I said, Lord, you know, how do I, how do I bring this about in, in, in uh, to introduce you? And um, so I had certain business goals. And um, what, what I found is that the Lord gave me a huge platform to be able to minister to people. And I just started sharing. And I want to let you all know that, um, you know, one of the first things I ever did, brother, and I look back and I go, wow, that was so, it wasn't, it was an insignificant, but when I look back at it, it was very small, is I remember we had a bit of a conference and I wanted to get up and say grace over the meal. And man, I was sweating bullets. I was sitting there going, man, what's going to happen here? 
and I, and I, and I said, God, I need you. And I remember I got up and I was sweating and I got up and I said, grace, you know what, brother? Nobody shot me. It was okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big stepping stone at that point in time saying, okay, you know, it, 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 I did that. And it was a faith journey for me. And then after that, it was, you know, let's, let's, how do I, again, how do I step to the next level? And how do I look for people that are in, you know, that, mm -hmm. the, do, that the Lord opens the door? And when I'm saying the Lord opens the doors, maybe, you know, someone would come to my office and, and, and they would say, you know, I'm, I'm having problems with my son or problems with my daughter. See, I look at that as the spirit of God's opening the door. It is. And I can say, you know, Russ, do you mind, like, I'm a Christian. Do you mind if, can I pray with you? Can I pray for you? And maybe you're not comfortable at praying right in front of them, but I'm going to say, when I get home tonight, I want to spend some time when I'm going to pray for you. Could I check in with you tomorrow and how your son's doing? And it, it just the people in the marketplace, in order for us, they need to know that we care. Mm -hmm. And when they sense that, That's true. they're so open to, to what God wants to do. And the company that you're with, you're one of the leaders in the company. And I know it was about a year ago, uh, we bumped into each other in, uh, in the United States, actually, where you were doing a boot camp. And uh, why don't you explain some of the things that happened there? Because, like, you've done so many outreaches. You have this evangelistic call that is so profound in the marketplace. To see it in operation is wonderful. Amen. Yeah, it's been... Uh, what we're finding, brother, is that um, a lot of people are, um, are looking for the fulfillment in the financial arena. You know, they're thinking, if I get my finances, if I make more money, I'm going to be happier. It's going to take care of my problems. And uh, what we've done is we facilitated a, um, um, a conferences. And these conferences, what we really want to do is, yeah, we want to teach them some business principles and how they can succeed in business. But then we, we have an optional Sunday service. We threw that in. And uh, our focus was for sure the, uh, the optional Sunday service for them to come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And we leave it as optional, but it's amazing as we step out, God meets us there. And over the years, brother, um, you know, and, and again, the first time, the second time, you're, you know, you're, you're, it, it's a faith journey. But interesting is we step out of our comfort zone, God meets us there. Mm -hmm. It's when you get that little, man, I don't, you know, you get a little nervous, and we're all going to be like that. But that's where God meets us. And uh, the first year we did it, we, uh, uh, we had about 300 come out on an optional Sunday service. And there was over 100 that came forward that gave their heart to Jesus. Now, I say that with humility. God knows the heart. Um, we're not, you know, only God knows truly how many were saved that day. But we know that they moved along in that spiritual sure. journey, you know. Um, last year, the meeting you're referring to is we, know, we uh, um, had a Wild at Heart weekend where we brought people, um, invited them to a, what we call a boot camp weekend. And not only did we share the gospel with them, we got into some family origins uh, issues. And, and, and we watched God just show up mightily and watched men that uh, uh, God healed right in the process. We had men coming in that were in the midst of major sexual battles. Some were having affairs. Some were dealing with uh, uh, abusing their daughters. And they came forward, and God met them right there. And again, these are people, brother, that I don't know if they would ever darken the door of a church, but they will listen to a business person that cares, that they could relate to. And so that's where there seems to be such a move, such an openness in the marketplace. I believe that the great move of the Spirit is going to happen outside the four walls of a church uh, into really that marketplace arena, whether it's in politics or business um, in, in other spheres of influence. And God is going to establish people like yourself in each one of these areas of influence in our society and begin to use them and the gift that's on them. Because you have a tremendous gift as an evangelist. I mean, you, you know, sometimes we think of an evangelist and we think that it's the person always at the platform, and you do a great job doing that as you come to our churches and, and you share there from a pulpit-style ministry. You've been to a number of our churches here in southern Ontario, and, and you do a great job when you're there. Mm -hmm. But there are so many areas, just like the boot camp or like the outreach that goes into families or like when you work with pastors, and, and you do a great work with pastors that are, uh, you know, pastors that are in need, mm -hmm. and not just financial need, but they're in spiritual need. They're, they're in a battle or struggle in their own life, and you take them with you to, uh, you know, on trips and, and 
and do things with them to help support them mm -hmm. and the call that's on their life. You know, that, that's another great part of your ministry. You know? Amen. Uh, I just, um, you know, I, I think we're all to be encouraged in our walk, and, and I think there's such a call uh, on our pastors. There's such an attack on our pastors, a call on our pastors. And, and I, we as marketplace leaders, and, and if you're in the marketplace, we need to lift up our pastor. They're an authority over us, and we need to love them, encourage them, because they're under such an attack, and they're criticized, and they need people that are, that are going to come alongside and, and, and just really be an encouragement to them and love them for who they are and the call that's on their life. And, and it's, it's, it's such a blessing to work with so many. You had Maeve and I out with you last year on the Thousand Lakes, and I guess it's called the Thousand, thousand Islands. Correct. Thousand Islands. Yeah. And uh, we so enjoyed that time. You know, we spent a day together. And, had dinner, and for Maeve and I, it was a chance for us to unwind, you know, with a brother and sister and just relax. Mm. And I'm sure when you do those little excursions with people in ministry, uh, you'd be surprised, and you're going to be surprised when you see the Lord and see the effect that that has, that that really has had on the harvest. And you also, uh, uh, just recently with the movie Courageous, mm. you established an outreach and evangelistic program through your church. You know, besides all the outreach you do, you're also very active in your local church as an elder and a, um, a leader in your church. You? Yeah, the courageous, um, um, and, and I know a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, believers out there uh, are familiar with uh, the movie Fireproof or Facing the Giants. Um, courageous, again, these are opportunities that um, I think marketplace leaders have got have to capture the moment, capture um, something where... Their friends at work will, will go to a movie theater. Walk into a church, maybe not ready yet, but walk into a theater. And, and when that movie came out, and just, again, just to encourage you, um, when the movie came out, I called my pastor and I, I suggested, I said, um, what do you think about renting the theater and designing it where it's an outreach, where we can invite people for free and have every family bring a non-Christian family? And, uh, of course, you know, it's, again, these are ideas, and, I, and, and, and God really showed up. And uh, we read a theater for 400 people. It was 440 seats, and the 380 tickets were sold. And uh, my pastor just real uh, simply at the end, I, he came up, and he uh, brought me up on stage and just asked me a few questions. You know, what was my life before I met Jesus, and what happened? And I had a chance to share the gospel and that might have been maybe a 10-minute session at the conclusion of the movie. But we watched um, uh, 55 people that evening made a commitment for Jesus Christ. And uh, after that, we did a, a follow-up as an alpha follow-up for many to get involved. Um, but again, it's just looking for these opportunities where we can reach the people that we work with. If you're out there as a marketplace minister, I think you can, uh, you can see that... that Jim not only has a heart for outreach, but has a heart for the church and to build the church. And there are so many opportunities out there. Myself, as a, uh, as a pastor, uh, I'm looking for people that have that gifting and calling and that want to come alongside of me as well and the vision that God has for our corporate work wherever we're at. And the sooner we can begin to bring those barriers down between us, walk together and facilitate the harvest. Like last night, you did a beautiful job with the Full Gospel Businessmen. We had a dinner in Burlington, Ontario, and you did a great job in sharing your testimony. And it, it really touched a, a number of people's lives in the room. The one gentleman that I brought, a lot of the situations that you shared in your testimony about your life and you know mm -hmm. it, it actually ministered right into what he's going through right now so you know there's so many opportunities out there and uh, you have a, a, a great diversity of your call you come alongside us at the Kingsway you did the outreach in the park with us in Gage Park last year mm -hmm. in downtown Hamilton and uh, to, to see you get out and do the things you do I, I want you to know you're you're an inspiration to me. And I believe you're one of the models that God's trying to establish, especially here in Canada, but all across the world. All of North America right now, Marketplace mm -hmm. is much more effective ministry than in the nuclear church. Because a lot of people have been, you know, turned off, hurt, broken in church, mm -hmm. disappointed with leadership. And like you say, they'll never darken the door. Their shadow never darken the door of a church. But they'll meet you where you're at and 
they'll be willing to listen to you in that setting and situation. That's correct. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And, you know, it's kind of like the book of Acts. Um, you know, 38 out of the 39 book in the Acts and the book of Acts were all done in the marketplace. And, and when I look at that, that would be like, well, where's church happening today? I almost think church is happening today at the local Tim Hortons or the local Starbucks. It's that one-on-one -on -one where you can meet with someone and, uh, you know, be able to see what's going on with their life. You know, you can just by asking a few questions. And, and God saying, and, and I believe, as you mentioned, brother, that everyone listening to this or watching this, you have a call in your life. It's not that... You, we're each one of us are any different. God has a call. He's asking each one of us to say, you know, to be his spokesman. And I, I, I think sometimes we think, well, there's a spiritual rung and God uses some people. I remember when I first got, well, not first got saved, but a few years down the road, I said, why does it appear God uses some people and not other people? And uh, what, what I found out, it's not based on our potential. It's based on our availability. Mm -hmm. Are we available? That's a big point. Are we available for God to use us? And, you know, and it doesn't matter what your respective vocation is. Uh, it could, you could be an, an administrative assistant. God can use you right where you're at. And you just need to know there's a call in your life, but are you ready? Are you, are you praying, saying, God, use me today for your purposes? I'm available. Send me. I want to be used. And uh, there's, no, there's no greater fulfillment piece. There's nothing more exciting than... You know, a lot of time... Um, as business people and professionals, uh, even as family people, we set natural goals for ourselves, for our family, sometimes financial goals, educational goals. But sometimes we don't really take the time that we need to set those spiritual goals. And the Lord spoke into that when he talked about, you know, uh, if you gain the whole world, mm. you lose your soul. Mm. Had there been some times where there's been a battle inside of you and in your life, uh, where you, because, I mean, you're right in the middle uh, of a worldly setting where people have great wealth and there's a lot of temptation. How do you deal with that on a, you know, when you're confronted with all of that? With the, um, well, probably a few things, brother. First of all, I don't ever, uh, it's, uh, we all deal with temptations. We all deal with the struggles of the world. There's a, there's a constant pull. And uh, for me, and I think a lot of, you know, um, believers are maybe in the same boat is if we, if we can get busy doing the things of God, and stay busy doing the things of God. Not that we want to be saved based on works or anything, but just, you know, be busy doing the things of God. Be busy getting to know Him. And um, the desires of the, what we call the flesh, the desires of the world, don't, they, they just don't have time to get a, get, get a hold of you. And with that being said, I don't want every, you know, anybody to think that, you know, I have not struggled with it. I've had not fallen from it. My own my own personal journey, I remember, uh, uh, brother, I made a decision for Christ back in 1990. And, but I made a commitment for Christ in 2000. And so those 10 years, um, I had, I had to, you know, I made a, and I'm not here to create a, theolo a theology debate, but I'm just talking about the own fruit in my life. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I said a prayer in 1990, um, but I struggled. I struggled with uh, the, a lot of the temptations of the world, and I still got pulled in. And I got pulled in by uh, thinking that, um, you know, uh, maybe a, a faster car. I remember I bought a Porsche and I, and I uh, bought a bigger house and I did some things and I bought a big boat and I thought, oh, maybe this will give me more fulfillment, more joy. And uh, it was empty. It was all empty. And um, so, that, you know, so I, I think what we need to do is, is – um, Stay in a group, too, that's accountable. Stay with some brothers, like you've been a well, blessing really for Trish and I. Uh, our pastors, you know, stay with them. Stay in a group where you can get real with guys and say, guys, this is what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a strong pull, even in the sexual arena. Uh, you know, a lot of us are struggling with porn. I know I struggle in my areas of sexual uh, uh, issues as well, and, and God really delivered me from there. And so I want to, um, I want to just uh, encourage you that, or encourage everybody that stay busy doing the things of God. And, um, and staying connected is big too. Because sometimes it's easy for us to, you know, we're off doing, doing our own thing in our own little world. And we get disconnected from the rest of the body. And we, we can become a real target for the enemy, you know, when we're like that. Where if we stay in a place of accountability and relationship, covering. boy, I mean, that, that's huge. To be able to be able to relate to people who have mutual goals and objectives who can look into our life objectively 
and uh, and uh, just be in relationship together is really big. You know, I, I know I had some real battles, and I spent 21 years in the marketplace. I had some real battles in the area of family and keeping things in right balance. And to have Christian brothers uh, around me and a support system were really important. And the times in my life that I got out of whack were the times that I fell away from that accountable relationship within the body, and I didn't have people that were right there with me during that time. How do you balance that? I mean, you have a really busy schedule. And then you have a busy schedule doing ministry as well as business. And then you have a, a wonderful aunt, Trish, it's a tremendous blessing, and your children. And how do you balance all that? I think, brother, um, um, first of all, it balances a discipline. It's, it's not going to come at once, and, and you're going to learn. And sometimes you're going to get a little far to the right, a little far to the left. and and uh, But... Um, yeah, I think it's been more of a just a, a decision and give some, build some margin in your schedule through the day. I find that's another. Build some margin in your schedule. Uh, spend time with God. I, I mean, you know, a lot of us, um, we run, we know we want to get a word, but we, we need to get, we need to get close with God. Mm -hmm. And I think, brother, you had mentioned that um, I know I've got brothers around me. And, um, you know, even last night when I, we were down uh, doing the, um, the outreach with the um, full gospel, uh, dinner, you know, I, I emailed some or, and text some brothers and I said, can you pray for me? You know, pray and, and let them know what I'm doing and where I am at. And uh, I'm not, and, and even though I'm alone, uh, I believe the enemy's tactic is to isolate us. Because if he can isolate us, then he can get us alone. He can put us in a position. And uh, we don't want to be isolated. We want to be, as you mentioned, brother, we want to be connected. And, uh, you know, I, I can, I want to encourage you men out there that maybe if you're listening to this, Find two or three brothers in the Lord or, you know, that you can be transparent and be real with. Be real at your deepest core so they can pray for you, they can lift you up, they can encourage you, they can be there as, as a band of brothers. You know, kind of, kind of like Moses when he had Aaron and the, lift up his arms in the battle. There's someone there to stand right by your side and, and watch your back. And um, that, that, I think, brother, can help you stay in balance because... Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us have become cultural Christians where we get caught up in going after the things of this world. And little inadvertently, what happens is we wound our wives and our, or our spouses uh, and our children because we get caught up chasing the idols of this world. Mm -hmm. And so um, we need to rest in what our identity is and who God has called us to be. Well, you touched on a lot of things that are really important. I'm sure there's some people out there watching us today that can really relate to where you're at and what you're doing. And when you first started this journey, um, uh, were you easily accepted in the church community? Did they embrace you? Or how, how did that go at the beginning? Because there's some people that really get a lot of resistance in those early stages. Yeah, I, um, you, and a great thing about a bit of a resistance is sometimes the, um, it's the enemy wants to discourage you. And unfortunately, he can discourage you through the brothers. Mm. And I remember the first time um, I had mentioned that I was going to have a Sunday optional service during my business week, and some people had criticized, well, hang on, you shouldn't do anything on Sunday. But how would I reach the loss if I didn't do something on a Sunday? Yeah. And so we had to set it up like it's optional, and there's a, you know, I want to talk to you about a deeper, um, what's really going on in my life, what really changed, what really made me happy. I'm going to talk about it on Sunday morning. And so we had to do that. And yeah. so I, I think you could get a little bit of opposition. But, especially, like you say, from the religious community. Yeah, especially. And, and I think, um, you know, a lot of us, we don't like rejection. But yet, um, Jesus, he didn't like rejection, but he, got, he was rejected and he did it for us on the cross. And I think sometimes what you've got to look at is the call in your life. And don't worry about the rejection. If you're a little uncomfortable, that's okay. God wants to meet you there. And, and what we need to do is... Um, work or do it for the audience of one. Do it for him. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to do. Well, you know, you, you touched on so many important things. And even there, when you talk about that opposition, uh, they oppose Jesus the same way for healing someone on the Sabbath. Mm. He's saying, you know, he's the Lord of the Sabbath. And that's his day. Mm. Who wouldn't take care of even their animal, let alone to be able to reach out and touch the heart of another man? and uh, to have a heart to do that. And I, I just want you to know that Maeve and I, we really appreciate you and Trish and the work that you do. 
you know, throughout the kingdom and extending and advancing the kingdom. That's the real role of kingdom ministers today and marketplace ministers today. And that diversity, I believe that you are going to actually have a tremendous impact on the end time army of God here in Canada and in other nations of the world. Thanks for joining me today and for the, the wonderful impact that you have on our churches. And you're a great example. It's, it's a blessing being here, brother. It's, uh, I've been blessed by um, you and Maeve and um, even your Kingsway Outreach Center. That was just really spoke to me. And, and um, you know, I, I always, one of my um, favorite verses, brother, is spur one another on in good deeds. Mm -hmm. And when I went down and uh, saw what was happening in the park and the people, the poor being fed, and just really what was happening. And, and it's interesting, we can get caught up in doing our things at work and in the business world. But if Jesus was walking this day and age, where would he be? And when I went down that day with you in the park and I saw the poor getting fed and I saw you know many of your people at the church just loving on these people and explaining the gospel, I said, if Jesus was walking today, I knew where he'd be. He would have been right in that park. And so what a wonderful, wonderful uh, testimony. And, and I just want to encourage you, if, you if, if anybody's out there and or you're listening today, that God has a call in their life. You don't need a Bible college. You don't need a seminary course. He, you know, there's a, there's a scripture verse, Brother Peter, I think it's, or not Peter, Acts uh, 4.13. And it talked about how the people watched Peter and some of the other disciples. And they said they took note that they had been with Jesus. Mm. Because there was such a power in their teaching and an anointing. And the anointing here is on every believer that's listening to this. That if they can walk out, they can step out, God is going to meet them there. You know, if you're out there now and you've been watching today, and maybe God's been moving on your heart and moving in your life, but you didn't quite no, or you didn't have that confidence and that strength to step out. I want you to know that today, uh, this, is your, this is the moment of confirmation of the call to marketplace ministry, the call to arise, and uh, the call to show up, the moment of confirmation. And I'm going to have, in just a moment, we're going to close with a moment of prayer, and I'm going to have Jim pray for you, that you'll step into that right place, and that the wonderful anointing that's on his life to extend and advance the kingdom outside the four walls of traditional church is going to fall upon your heart. I want to thank you for joining us today on the Prophetic Edge. And Jim, if you would, would you just pray for those today? I know there's a number of people that have been touched, not just with methods and concepts, but they know in their heart now that they're called. Absolutely. If you can just Absolutely. say a prayer over them and encourage Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Let's just, let's just uh, commit this time to the Lord and just join me in prayer. And if God knows your heart, so just pray and Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we're, first of all, Lord, we're so thankful for the call that you've put in each of our lives. Yes, Lord Church, you have called us to do the great works. So, Father, we just pray, Lord, that every person that's listening to this message right now, in their heart of hearts, Lord, you've asked them to do something. They've been sitting in church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, and you've been speaking truth into their lives and now lord you're asking them to do something to step out to trust you and yet lord they have this fear and they say no not me i can't do that and lord we want to come against that spirit of i can't and lord that they would just awaken you would awaken them lord that their spirit would say lord here i am send me because lord if you're calling them you will equip them so, Father, we pray for each believer out there today that they would receive this, Lord, and they would say, Lord, show me how to step out where you've called me. Show me how to step out in the marketplace. Show me how to be a light in this dark, dark world. And, Father, we would give you all the glory. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us today on the Prophetic Edge. You have a great day, man. God bless you. Mm -hmm.